Hi everyone, it's Lisa from My Dreaming Soap. Welcome to my channel and thanks for dropping by. Today I've got some exciting news which I'll tell you about after we've talked about today's soap. Now for today's soap we're going to be doing a column pour. Now I don't do an awful lot of column pours because for me I tend to feel that a column pour does have a couple of weaknesses. The first of those is that when you've finished your pour you need to remove whatever it is that you've been using as a column from your soap. And that can leave a damaged, muddied sort of area. Now, of course, you can top that up with other little bits and pieces of soap batter, but I never think that that area is as great as the rest of your pour. And then secondly, whilst the pour can look brilliant after you've just done it in your slab mould, when you come to cut the slab up into individual bars, not every single bar tends to get a really good piece of the design. So you can have some bars that don't look quite as good as the others. So I'm hoping that the way that we're gonna do it today solves those issues. Now onto my exciting news. Well, it's exciting for me, so hopefully some of you are gonna be reasonably interested. I have this week managed at last to open the I Dream In Soap online shop. So I have of course uploaded a number of products and I've been really lucky that in the first day I did sell out of a few of them. So thank you very much for everyone who's already bought some soap off of me. Now I'm obviously going to be working really hard to make sure I get lots of soaps up onto my website and restock those that are out of stock at the moment. But if you are interested in buying some soap from I Dream In Soap, I'm going to leave a link in the description box below. And you might find it helpful to subscribe to the mailing list and then you'll be notified of any time we have a shop update. Come on! Let's go make some soap. I'm going to start my soap by making a moon embed that I'm going to use for my column pour. So to make my moon, it's going to mainly be white, so I'm using some titanium dioxide, but I want to have some grey streaks going through it, so I'm going to use my antique silver from my Kamama. So I need to actually make these embeds the day before I make my main soap. So I've just worked out how much batter I need to fill my moulds up and I'm just going to do the normal sort of stuff. Take my lye, mix it in with my oils and then emulsify everything together. And then I'll just pour off the amount that I want for the grey bits going through my moons. Now of course you could just pour off a little bit and colour it as you go through. I've just literally worked out how much I want just so I can get my colourings the right amount that I want and I know how much fragrance oil to put in each part. But just literally pouring a bit off and eyeballing it would be perfectly fine. I then add some titanium dioxide to my remaining soap batter. I always predisperse my titanium dioxide really well and I've got a video showing you how I do that and it means I don't actually have to stick blend it into my batter, I can just gently stir it in. So less stick blending is always great isn't it? And I use my titanium dioxide at a rate of one teaspoon per pound of oils which when diluted is one tablespoon per pound of oils. The fragrance oil I'm using is a love story from Sentimental in the UK. Now this isn't a love spell type fragrance because those are quite fruity, it is different to that. Now I know um, this type of fragrance might seem a little bit weird for the soap that I'm making but this isn't a soap I'm going to be able to sell because I've swapped colours around so I don't have an assessment for it so I've just chosen a fragrance that I really like.
then to get the effect that I want, which is like a wispy sort of swirl in my moon, I'm just going to do an in the pot swirl, but I'm deliberately doing it while my batter's still a really quite a thin trace because I want to get that real wispiness in the colours. Now I don't have a moon column mould, but I do have various bits of plumbing pipe and I even managed to get these handy little caps for them, which is great because it saves having to reuse cling film and that sort of stuff. Um, and these, as I say, are just plumbing pipes um, that I got from a DIY store. And there's no reason why I've got them at these lengths. They're just the bits that I've got. So I'm just going to fill all of them up to make my embeds and then I'll cap them and then let them saponify and set up until the next day. So I unmolded the embeds the next day. Um, I don't tend to line my pipes or anything. Can I find, um, whether it's my recipe or whatever, mine never tend to stick inside any of my pipes. I always try to push mine out with something like a small bottle cap actually works really well for these thinner tubes. And I definitely find pushing the embeds out rather than trying to pull them too much is a good way of getting them out. Now I'm not sure how well you can see this but with the long one I just literally got a bit of a plastic disc and put it in the end of the pipe and then I've used um, the end of a sort of washing up brush to even give it a good push until it's a long way out of the pipe and then I could gently ease it out of the pipe to remove it the rest of the way. And then to complete my embeds, I cut them into smaller bits because I was going to do a slab type mould. And then I just took another piece of round tube and I pushed it through the embed to turn them into the moon shape. And once I'd done that, I just put a little bit of distilled water on the bottom of each embed and sat it in the mould and then just let that sit for a little while so I got a good grip with those embeds so they wouldn't move around. And then to make my base, I'm going to be using some electric blue from You Make It Up. And then I'm going to combine some purple passion and some red riot together to get a nice sort of magentary type colour. And then lastly, some activated charcoal, which I predisperse just like I do with my titanium dioxide in some oil. So then I've just made up some batter and all I've done with this is just mixed it to emulsion and this is another one of those techniques where you need to keep your batter really fluid because if you imagine you've got to pour it on top of your column and it needs to flow down the column and then spread out through the mould and if you let your batter get too thick at the start you're not going to be flowing anywhere you're just going to be blobbing by the time you get to the end of your pour. So if you can see in the bottom of the jugs, I've already pre-dispersed my micas. And remember, we know that that's a really good thing to do because it means we don't have to stick blend them into the batter, which is really important when we're trying to keep a thin trace. I do think spending a little bit of time working with your colours, making up some colour swatches like you see that I've got, and learning what rates give you what type of colours is really useful. Because then, when you're in a situation like this, you know exactly how much mica to put into your jug and pre-mix to get a nice result. And you also then don't have to do that sort of guessing game when you're dropping in bits of dry mica and guessing and blending it in and then adding a little bit more and all of that sort of thing. 
So I've split my emulsified batter amongst my colours and I've actually done twice as much black as I have for the other two colours and that way I can go black, then the blue, then the black, then the magenta and alternate them that way. And then when I've got all my colours dispersed, I'll add my fragrance oil. And obviously I'm using the same fragrance oil as I used for my embed. And just be careful, as we said, with this technique. It's important that your batter will stay fluid throughout the whole of the pour. So make sure you're choosing a fragrance oil that you can rely on not to speed up your trace. So then I've got some white soap that I've ground up and I'm just going to mix this in with the black batter. So that gives sort of the appearance of little white speckly bits that hopefully sort of look like some stars. And then we can just get on with our pour. So all we need to do is just alternate in the colour scheme that we fancy doing and just pouring a small amount on top of each one of those embeds. Now at the moment my batter is probably a little bit thinner than ideal but if you think about it it's quite likely that the pattern right at the bottom of this soap is going to get a little bit muddled anyway. So therefore it's better to start maybe a fraction thinner so that you end at the right consistency, then if you start at the perfect trace at this point, it's quite likely that your batter may be a little bit too thick when you get to the end. So as you can see, all I'm gonna do is alternate my pores over the embeds. I'm going to speed some of this up a little bit and pop on some music, um, because it takes a little while to do this pour. some stains on your photo they all cracks on your rusty frame stuck in the mud but it's okay i don't have the pieces of your home buried in the flashbacks oh this way So one of the reasons I decided to do my column pour by making some embeds rather than actually using a column is because I find with a column pour that typically when you see them, when the person's pulled the column out of the middle of the design, it kind of leaves that muddy, dirty, horrible sort of blobby bit in the middle that detracts from the design. So by us using an embed rather than a column, we're now going to have something that's a feature of the design rather than some sort of weird centre bit that detracts and ruins the design slightly. Now as you're doing a column pour, you do need to make sure that you give your mould a little tap down every now and again just to even out that top surface and allow your batter to spread away from those columns. Now when I finish mine, I'm actually going to leave mine just like this with the funny little moon sticking out. I'm not going to scrape down all that excess stuff that's on top of them because I don't want to ruin the surface. Um, when these get unmoulded, I just really want to trim the moons off and then give them a very little plane. And so therefore, I want that surface to be as it was poured and not mucked up by me scraping that batter down. 
Then I'll just finish off the design by just running through, well this is actually the end of my thermometer, but anything like a skewer or something will do, and just completing the pattern that I'd like. And I do think with this effect here, it's come out rather like a pipe divider swirl look, um, but a lot less washing up. So I've unmoulded the soap the next day and now we just need to chop it up. So I'm just going to mark it out and divide the soaps up first. And then once we've done that, we can then sort out chopping off those extra bits of the moons. Now I don't have a proper slab cutter at the moment, so I've got this sort of wooden creation that I've made out of um, some wood, surprisingly. And again, it just keeps everything nice and straight. And then I take my coping saw that I'm sure you've seen me using quite a few times. I've just replaced the blade on that with a 22 gauge guitar string, and that works really nice as a soap cutter. So just gonna chop the bits up. And then I'm just going to use my coping saw again and just slide that just across the base of that moon. I don't really want to um, scratch or ruin the top of the soap very much. So just being very careful to trim that excess bit of the moon off. I will give these a little plane, but I don't want to waste too much soap and have to plane a whole load of that top layer off. And then I'm left with these extra little bits of moon. Now, if you've been careful with these, there's no reason why you couldn't either put them together like a long column inside a normal loaf mold and have another moon embed. Um, I'm probably gonna go through, and in fact, I do go through and just scrape those extra bits of soap batter off. But to be honest, if you were gonna pop those into a loaf mold or something, you wouldn't even notice that extra batter around the outside. And then I left the soap for one more day. It's always good to leave them for a day or maybe even a couple of days before you plane the soaps. Now, I'm not gonna plane them too much. All I'm trying to do is now get that moon finally down to a smooth surface with the rest of the soap. And then when I'm happy that the surface is smooth, I'll then just flip it onto its corners and bevel those edges. And I'll repeat that for all the soaps. I'm sure you don't want to watch me go through all of them. So we'll just do this one. And then here they are all planed up and it's quite funny all those little sprinkles that I put in I think because of the way the pour was done they've actually all been pushed down towards the sort of lower levels of the soap and if you look at the soap sort of from the side you can see them sort of from about three quarters of the way up so as the soap gets used those little sprinkles will start to appear. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you like the soap maybe it's something that you'll try yourself. Thanks for watching everyone. Happy soaping.